So many of the things we take for granted would be impossible without the intricate designs and molds of metal casting. We caught up with the men from Aquig to find out a little bit more about the science behind the metal. Thank you. Metal casting is a very diverse field and part of metal casting deals with transformation of a liquid metal into a solid metal. Then the other part, the technological part, has to do with shaping the liquid metal. Without casting, our civilization would not be what it is today. Metal casting, which is just a purely engineering field with very clear purpose in producing goods, which you see in your car, in your TV, sometimes in your body as a hip joint. There are several ways of making shape parts. You can forge them, you can machine them, and you can cast them. And casting is the fastest way and cheapest way. As one of our students answers uh, when he's asked uh, why he was attracted in metal casting, says that it was because it was the fastest way from going to junk to a finished part. And I think that's a pretty good description. As we look forward to new advances, whether it uh, be in aerospace or automotive, or fuel cells, things like that, there are still opportunities for metal casting in the future. Relatively early, I established a relationship with NASA and I've been involved in some space experiments on the shuttle. And that relationship continued over time. And uh, once I moved here at Ohio State, a new opportunity arised, and that was from the national program that we have now uh, to put a uh, permanent station on the moon. I've been requested to help uh, people at MIT, NASA, and one of my students, Evan Standish, is working on this as part of a master thesis. The ultimate goal of, of the project is to generate oxygen on the moon. Uh, you can't import it from Earth. And so there is this uh, process that has been developed at MIT, uh, which is an electrolysis process, where you take the lunar soil and, and by applying electricity to it, you decompose it and obtain the oxygen. And then some byproducts of this process, iron and silicon. And the problem is how to handle these materials, how to extract it from the reactor. And as a byproduct of the oxygen generation, you get uh, some leftover oxides which need to be extracted and thrown away. Um, but you also get useful metal, which can then be cast um, and used for uh, whatever, whatever applications you might have for lunar uh, industry. They presented this work to the American Foundry Society chapter in uh, here in central Ohio, and they're absolutely astonished to see what these students did in their free time for no credit and for no money, just because they have an interest. And, and what uh, one of the guys said there, he said, well, look, with students like you, our future is safe. And I think this is an understatement. I knew coming to Ohio State there would be all number of opportunities. Certainly I'm not surprised that NASA would be involved at Ohio State, but it is exciting to say, you know, I'm working on a project that, that hopefully will one day be in place on the moon. Uh, not many people have the opportunity to say that. That's our show for today. From the Ohio State University, I'm Chris Forbes. Thanks for watching.